Okay, so this exercise, kettlebell swing, um, I put this in in almost every workout. Okay? It's kind of the bread and butter kettlebell exercise. Um, it's made, designed to uh, condition your glutes, hamstrings, your core, and it also kind of works your aerobic because you're going to be burning calories as well. Okay? So, um, the best thing to remember when you're doing a kettlebell swing is to keep your stomach open or to keep you know, a good gap between the bottom of your rib cage and your hip bone. Okay? So, stick your stomach out. Your stomach sticking out, you couldn't possibly be bending your back. Okay, so keep your stomach open, push forward, pulling the kettlebell back, rejecting the weight by firing your hips forward. Okay? It's giving a good pressure, a good pull down, and firing forward. Okay, so as long as your stomach stays open, you're not going to be bending your back. This is the incorrect, incorrect method for a lot of beginners when you're doing kettlebell swing. You close the stomach over, and they're bending their back. Okay, so really what that means is when you keep your stomach open, when you come back, you keep your pelvis tilted forward as opposed to rolling back. Okay, so that's going to put a negative pressure on your spinal column. So keep your stomach open, basically tilting your back up into the air, and I'll just make sure that your back stays nice and straight. Okay, so next one is a clean and press on the aqua bag. And um, now, as with most exercises, it's all going to be focused on the lower back. Okay. So, as you come down towards the bag, make sure you're sitting back almost into a squat and not just leaning forward. Okay. So, the big difference between leaning forward and pulling your hips back. Okay. So, there's two ways you can almost come towards the ground. Okay. So, pull your hips back, an overhand grip into the bag. Maybe always, some people tend to kind of come through the toes, so bring the heels off the ground. Always a pressure should come through your heel. Okay. So, inhale, exhale, come through the heel, kicking up, flipping over. And up into the position. Okay, we just need to pull out the front and give it a good flick of the rest of the top. Exhale, lock down overhead, inhale back down, flip it over, and sit it back down towards the ground. And down. Uh, so, really important you come the hips back even when you're bringing the bag back down towards the ground. Okay, next one is a squat. Now, I'll show you with the kettlebell. It's going to be the exact same uh, if you're doing a bodyweight squat. And the same kind of mechanics if you're going to be doing with the bar or pretty much anything, any sort of resistance. So, with the kettlebell, pulling up in the front, pull by the horns, that's what's called the kettlebell. So pulling the shoulders back, pinching the shoulder blades. Now, you want a good, a good wide stance in your feet. Um, it doesn't really matter actually how far uh, apart your feet are, uh, just as long as your toes are pointing slightly out but not too far out. Okay, not dead on straight. So, you always start a squat. Inhale, coming back, pulling the hips back. That's how you initiate a squat. Hips back, sinking down, all the way, keeping up parallel, stay upright with your body. Exhale, driving through the heels, and up. So, an incorrect method would be to come straight down, knees coming forward, and you see the heels come off the ground. Okay, that's not where the pressure wants to be. So, initiate by starting pulling the hips back, about five inches down into the imaginary seat, all the way, feel a stretch in your groin at the bottom, exhale, and up through the heel. Kettlebell down, bend the legs, and down. Okay, so next one is an ab roll out. We throw that in quite a lot. It's a very effective one at uh, kind of conditioning your stomach. You tighten your core, it will make your stomach appear a bit more slender. Okay? So it is one that people usually kind of perform. Um, little bit off and really what they're doing is they're not really opening up their hips enough. Okay, so I'll show you the correct method. Correctly perform perform ab roll. Okay, so arms length on the TRX, hips slightly closed, inhale, extending out, exhale, and back. Inhale out, exhale, and back. Okay, now we stay the logic and make this but we leave the hips behind. Come the arms and back. That's going to be sort of working your lats almost. Okay, I'm not be sure that's not even targeting the core at all. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is hips closed, back straight, coming out of side of the tank, see the shoulders and the hips. So coming out the straight, inhaling, exhale, and pull back. Okay? Do you want to come out of Superman style? All the way, exhale, while pulling back. If okay, you do that correctly, you should feel almost like a ripping sensation in your stomach and ironically it will make you rip. Okay? So
make sure that the hips come out at the same time as the shoulders. Okay, next one, jump squats. Uh, good plyometric exercise. It's going to absolutely shred your calories. Uh, developing the fast twitch muscle fiber in your legs, um, which will not only make you faster, but give you a stronger metabolism as well. Okay? So, remember that a jump squat, instead of essentially a squat, has all the properties of the squat. You're just kicking to the ground and you're leaving, you're leaving the ground and getting some air. That's what makes it plyometric. Okay, so power development, anything where you're really jumping and leaving the ground, it's going to be developing power. Okay? So, jump squat. You can see that I'm on my heels. I always will be on my heels. Okay? So, sitting back, just like a normal squat. Exhale, jump up, and land into a squat. And kicking back up through the heels. Okay, so moving's really different okay, compared to a normal squat. You can be slightly leaning back, but that's okay because you're hanging on to the TRX. Okay, now, this, get out to my feet. You can see that the mistake that a lot of people make is they come up onto their toes. So, if it's too far back, they'll be up on their toes, the knees will come forward. This is their jump squat. No impact coming through the heels. Okay, that's going to actually have an inadvertent uh, carry-on effect on your lower back. Okay, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the front of your knees. It's just not a very efficient way to do this. Okay, it can be actually unsafe. So, on the heels at all times, sitting back, exhale, kicking through, and landing into the squat. Turn your legs into shock absorbers to make sure that the pressure doesn't go through your knees. Okay, next one is tire flips. I want to pay kind of particular attention on this one because there's a lot of weight and it is obviously something that can go um, that can go wrong quite easily. Okay? So if your back is ever at risk on anything, it's a risk doing a tire flip. So you want to be very conscious of sort of your spinal position uh, when you're doing this exercise. Okay? So you have to get quite low and there's a lot of weight. So if anyone's going to put their back in, it's going to be doing a tire flip. Okay? And just like in something like the swing, you have to be careful that you're trying to keep your, up, your stomach open as much as possible. Okay? It'd be very difficult to perform a uh, tire flip completely straight back. You want to minimize that bend. Okay? So as long as you're keeping pressure on it, your back isn't going to be at risk. It's, it's kind of a loose back that's going to be injured. Okay? So, going up to the tire, getting nice and close to it. Okay? So you're not going to lean it too far, that's going to put more pressure on the back. So you're nice and close. Sitting back, getting as deep as you can in the legs. Hip, uh, nice little tip would be get your fingers underneath the tire and then pull your backside down towards the ground. Okay, you can see there's still a slight bit of bend in my back, but I can't really avoid that. Okay, you don't want to be it's like that, because that will damage you. Okay? As long as you've got a lot of support in the legs and you fire through the legs, keep it through the ground, your back should be relatively safe. Okay? So inhale, exhale. Push over, transferring over into a flip, and pushing over onto the opposite side. Okay, so I'll bring it back, I'll show you that again. Get nice and close. Coming down, pulling your back side towards the ground, inhale, exhale. Now, the first thing you're going to do is kick through the heels, kick through the ground. Exhale, kick through, up, and pushing over. Okay, so, still a slight bend in the back, but it's okay, as long as you're getting all that pressure through the legs and not actually in the back, you should be absolutely fine. Okay, so the next one is the plank exercise. Um, and then really on this one, it's about kind of you know, your, your hip height. So your hips pretty much are pretty important, they play a factor in everything, okay? So, in the plank, Elbows down, about shoulder distance apart. You want to have your shoulders sort of hovering over your elbow position. Okay, so you actually want your uh, the upper portion of your arm to be perpendicular to the ground. Arms out in front, coming out. Great big bridge between your toes and your elbows. Okay, that's a good plank position. If you feel my core engaging there, squeezing your glutes to protect your lower back. Okay, so hold that position. With control, deep breaths. Okay, once you feel your core locking, suck up your belly button and it's going to give, you know, it's going to be like kind of tighten your core set, okay? Or a uh, thing like cling film wrap around your stomach and then someone sort of, you know, compact on the Okay, what people tend to do is they'll drop down. They're still holding up the ground, but the core isn't really keeping them in their position. It's sort of your hip flexors now that are kicking in. Okay, or else people are too high and then, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit too much sort of on your glutes 
it's not really working at core either. So, coming down, continue to feel core compacting, spine nice and straight, and just breathing in and Okay, so, Russian twists. A real good one is going to work the core, your ab muscles, your rectus abdominis, your obliques, and your hip flexors as well. Okay, and it's also going to help like, your upper body because you're actually holding the kettlebell in your arms. Um, so the incorrect position, what a lot of people are doing, is you bend your spine down, closing off your stomach, lift your feet up, and you sort of side to side like that, kind of crunching up in the fetal position. What you want to be doing is, get the kettlebell up, open your stomach, pull your spine in, and then come off the ground. Okay, let's look at the bow position, pull back the shoulder blades, that's a good posture there, and then side to side movement. Okay, trying to bring the leading shoulder over as much as you can, and then rapidly switching over. Okay, no particular breathing pattern here, just side to side. Okay, so getting a good side to side movement is really going to be working 